Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the roles of insulin and glucagon in the regulation of blood glucose concentration. You should then be able to describe how this is an example of negative feedback. In the last video, we saw that the pancreas contains clusters of cells called the islets of Langerhans, and these form part of the endocrine system. The islets of Langerhans contain two types of cells. Alpha cells make and secrete the hormone glucagon when the blood glucose concentration falls too low. And the beta cells make and secrete the hormone insulin when the blood glucose concentration rises too high. Now it's essential that the concentration of glucose in the blood is kept at a relatively constant level. Glucose is used by cells to produce ATP via respiration. So if the blood glucose concentration falls, then the rate of respiration may also fall. If the blood glucose concentration increases, then this can lower the water potential of the blood, and this can cause water to move out of cells by osmosis. Okay, so we're gonna start by looking at what happens when the concentration of glucose in the blood rises. Now the normal concentration of glucose in the blood is around 90 milligrams per centimeter cubed. And there are three main ways that the concentration of glucose can increase. Firstly, if we eat food rich in carbohydrates, then these are digested to produce glucose. For example, a meal containing starchy foods such as pasta or rice, or sugary foods such as cakes and sweets. The glucose produced then passes into the bloodstream. The second way that the blood glucose concentration can increase is via glycogenolysis. Glycogen is a polymer of glucose stored in liver and muscle cells. During glycogenolysis, these glycogen stores are broken down, releasing glucose into the bloodstream. And lastly, the blood glucose concentration can increase due to gluconeogenesis. In this case, glucose is produced in the liver from non-carbohydrate molecules, for example amino acids or glycerol produced from lipids. And again, the glucose produced passes into the bloodstream. Now, there are two ways that the blood glucose concentration can decrease. Firstly, glucose is used as a source of energy via respiration. Now, all cells carry out respiration all the time, so glucose is constantly taken out of the bloodstream for this process. However, during intense exercise, the demand for energy massively increases due to muscle contraction. So during intense exercise, the concentration of glucose in the bloodstream can fall quite rapidly. Now, glucose can also be taken out of the blood by the liver and stored as glycogen. This is called glycogenesis. Glycogenesis takes place after meals in order to store the glucose produced by digestion. Okay, so let's look at how the blood glucose concentration is controlled. We're gonna start by looking at what happens when the blood glucose concentration increases, for example, after we eat a meal. The increase in glucose concentration is detected by beta cells in the islet of Langerhans in the pancreas. The beta cells respond to the increase by secreting the hormone insulin into the bloodstream. Now the insulin receptor is a glycoprotein found on the cell surface membrane of virtually every cell. And I'm showing you here the insulin receptor on the surface of a cell. Inside cells, there are vesicles containing glucose transport protein channels. When insulin binds to its receptor, this triggers a second messenger signal inside the cytoplasm. This signal triggers the vesicles to move to and fuse with the cell surface membrane. The glucose transport protein channels are now inserted into the cell surface membrane. The tertiary structure of the channels also changes to an open structure. Now, more glucose molecules can move into the cell cytoplasm by facilitated diffusion. And this movement of glucose into cells is especially effective in skeletal muscle. Now insulin has two other effects on cells. Firstly, insulin triggers the rate of respiration to increase so that glucose is used to release energy. And secondly, insulin activates enzymes which convert glucose to glycogen stores in the liver and in the muscles. And as we've seen, this process is called glycogenesis. Glucose is also converted to lipids. So the effect of all of these processes is that glucose is removed from the blood and either stored or used in respiration. And this reduces the concentration of glucose in the blood back to its normal range. Now, once the blood glucose concentration returns to normal, 
the beta cells detect this and reduce the amount of insulin secreted. And this is an example of negative feedback. Okay, now if the concentration of glucose in the blood decreases, then this is detected by alpha cells in the islet of Langerhans. And in response, the alpha cells secrete the hormone glucagon directly into the bloodstream. Now the receptors for glucagon are found on the cell surface membranes of liver cells, so liver cells are the target cells for glucagon. The effect of glucagon is to increase the concentration of glucose in the bloodstream, and glucagon does this in three ways. Firstly, glucagon triggers cells in the liver to break down their glycogen stores to glucose, and remember that this is called glycogenolysis. This glucose is then released into the bloodstream. Secondly, glucagon triggers liver cells to carry out gluconeogenesis, in other words, to produce glucose from amino acids and from glycerol. And again, this glucose is released into the bloodstream. And lastly, glucagon reduces the amount of glucose that liver cells absorb from the blood. So glucagon leads to an increase in the blood glucose concentration. Once the blood glucose concentration increases, this is detected by alpha cells. And in response, alpha cells reduce the amount of glucagon secreted. So again, this is an example of negative feedback. Now, I just want to finish by pointing out that adrenaline can also cause blood glucose concentration to increase. And we saw that in the video on the adrenal glands. During times of stress, adrenaline is secreted by the adrenal glands. And adrenaline triggers liver cells to convert glycogen stores to glucose. This glucose is then released into the bloodstream. The glucose can then be used as a source of energy for muscle contraction during fight or flight. In the next video, we look at how the secretion of insulin is controlled.